I have a Whirlpool bottom mount refrigerator here. It only has one door, although some styles may have two doors. But if your unit has a control system like the one we have in this unit, you have one that has a really decent control system in it to go over diagnostics and a few different issues. So I wanna show you how to go into diagnostics in this to replace the board and then reprogram the board as well in case you have any issues with it. These refrigerators tend to run really, really, really well. Uh, probably one of my favorites from Whirlpool, but in case you run into an issue, I wanna show you how to do some basic things on this to get it back up and running, hopefully without too much of an issue. So let's go ahead and show you how to do some of the cool tricks that are available on this fridge. The big key to activate any of these diagnostic modes is the door switch here at the top of the unit near the interface. Depending on your style of fridge, you could have one or two of these switches. For any of the modes to work, you need to press them in and hold them to activate the codes. If you have two switches, both will need pressed in simultaneously, but all of the codes will work the same. The first test that I wanna show you how to do is the force defrost test. To do this, press the door switch or switches in and hold them, then press the refrigerator minus button three times in a row within six seconds, then release the door switch or switches. The letters F and D should show up on the display to show that it was activated correctly. From here, you can press the refrigerator plus button to toggle between a short and a long defrost. To then activate force defrost, press the minus button on the refrigerator. The display will go back to the normal mode displaying 4-4 on the interface. You should hear the compressor and any fans turn off and as well as the refrigerator damper closed. You can leave the door open or closed while it runs the defrost mode and it will keep operating. One major secret here on troubleshooting is that there's a very common problem with these refrigerators where if you go behind the refrigerator at the bottom, the compressor could still possibly be running. If by chance the compressor is still running, your control board is broken and you need to replace it. It is a common relay failure that will cause major problems with the refrigerator, causing it not to defrost properly. If you're in the FD mode and do not want to run the defrost, you can close the door or press the light switch off and on to reset the force defrost mode if needed before you've pressed the refrigerator minus button to get it started. But if you do select the force defrost mode and it's reset the 4-4, there's no way as per the manual to cancel the defrost. It's going to run through the short or long defrost as specified. Next, let's go to the service test mode. Press and hold the door switch or switches again and hold them. And within six seconds, press the refrigerator plus button three times in a row and then release the switches. The letters SE will show up on the screen, showing that you're now in the service test mode. Press the refrigerator plus key one more time to finalize entry into the service test modes. To scroll through the various tests, you'll use the freezer plus and minus buttons to go up or down on the test modes while the refrigerator plus and minus buttons will let you trigger the tests as we'll demonstrate these from the tech sheet info that's gonna be displayed at the bottom of the screen. Now I'm going to scroll through the nine tests that you can do on the style refrigerator.
If you've cycled through all the test modes or to exit the service mode, simply close the door or press and release the door switches to trigger it off. Next, I want to show you how to get into the control housing to access the control board for multimeter tests or to replace the board. The first thing that you need to do is remove some of the shelves to give you easier room to access the rear of this control housing. Next, you'll pull the light cover off by sliding it rearward of the housing. To remove the control housing cover, there are two rectangular holes, one on each side of this control housing as circled. You need to take a thin screwdriver that can fit in these holes and press and push the tabs down to then pivot the housing downwards. These tabs are not the easiest to push in to pop off the cover, but it's mostly due to having a camera in my face while doing it. Some could suggest a mirror or selfie mode on a cell phone to give you an easier view of these holes to press in on to pop the housing out. Once both tabs are pressed, the whole housing will roll rearward and allow it to pop out of place. From here, note the refrigerator is still actually plugged in. You can do voltage or resistance tests on the refrigerator wires to troubleshoot potential issues with a multimeter that has very small leads. I would suggest that you purchase a multimeter if you don't have one to do these tests because this can allow you to do different checks without having to say get into the freezer to determine if the defroster is bad as you can troubleshoot them from the board. I'll make sure to include a link to a multimeter in the description and a product tag as well. Now if you want to replace the board, first make sure that the refrigerator is in fact now unplugged from the wall, then remove the two wire harnesses that hold the board into place. The board is held in by two or three plastic retainers depending on the model and style. You need to either use a flathead screwdriver or potentially needle nose pliers to pull the plastic retainers up and away and then you can remove the board easily. If you need a replacement board, I will have a listing for them to where you can buy a third party version online. They are a fraction of the cost of the OEM ones. I will tag an OEM one as well in the description for a cost comparison. Typical replacement boards are one flat piece that you need to physically snap apart and separate the interface from the controller. This felt very odd to do, but that's how they are shipped and installed. Once the PCB is separated, you'll install them, the larger, wider piece to the base of the housing, and then the thinner piece to the interface as pictured. Make sure the ribbon cable is pointed up towards the top of the housing so the LEDs are oriented correctly. I found that snapping the interface assembly in was strangely difficult, and it required me using a needle nose plier to pull the retainer up and then position the board in the housing, but we're now all done. With the board ready, we're going to install it back to the refrigerator by putting the two wire harnesses back into position on the board. They can only be installed one way. Once done, you'll snap the housing back into place by slotting the front of the housing into the refrigerator chassis, then pressing the control interface into place. Even though I gave the thumbs up, I actually had to press it in a little bit further than what I showed, as the retaining fingers had to be pressed in very, very firmly to snap into place. Next, you're going to plug the refrigerator back in and give it 30 seconds to boot up. While it does this, you can slide the light cover back into place. There are fingers on the cover that slide on the top of this housing piece, which can't easily be shown on camera while I do this. The refrigerator interface will now flash 00, zero indicating that the interface needs programmed. Let's go ahead and reprogram the unit. With the door open, press and hold the door switch down so the lights turn off again then press the freezer minus button three times in a row in six seconds or less, then release the door switch or switches again if you have two door switches on your unit. If you've done this properly, you're going to see the PE on the display interface, and this means you're in the programming mode. You can use the freezer plus and refrigerator plus buttons to change the two digit programming code as needed. To find the exact code you need, which is specific to your model refrigerator, look at your Whirlpool refrigerator serial number and model plate. This is where it was on our refrigerator. This will give you the code to insert onto the screen. In the case of this refrigerator, it's 01. Once you have the correct programming number set, press and hold the freezer minus button for three seconds. The lights will then flash off and on, showing that the mode has been installed. To finish the installation, press and hold the light switch in place for a moment, then release, and then you'll be totally done with the board installation. These are all the things I wanted to show you in this video today. I hope this helps you. Make sure to subscribe for more content.